Okay, so Javante Tank Davis confirms that Mayweather Promotions and him are going to split after the Roly Romero fight this Saturday at the Barclays Center. Is Tank making a mistake by leaving Mayweather? And that's before we get to the predictions, because we will give a prediction for the fight. But let's start up there. Is Tank Davis making a mistake by leaving Floyd Mayweather? And I guess I started off and then I pass it to whoever wants it. Look, I, I say this, you know, I want to see Tank Davis in the biggest fights possible, right? And there's a lot of speculation about the direction with him being under Mayweather. You know, who really wants the fights? Does Mayweather want the big fights for him? Or is it Tank that wants the fights? We all know Mayweather's style. You know, Mayweather's style is about making money. That's just what it comes down to. And I can't disrespect the hustle. A lot of people think I get at Mayweather because I thought that he waited some fighters out in the past, which, clear, I'm not lying, he did, but I'm not going to hate the hustle. It is what it is. You know, if he, if Tank Davis, it all comes down to his priorities. If he want to continue making money, which he is, and being a pay-per-view jaw, he can still be a pay-per-view jaw, jaw regardless, but if he want to continue making money, then, yeah, stay with Mayweather Promotions by all means. But if you want the fights, and you truly want the biggest fights out there, like um, Cambosos, Potentially, if he beats Haney or Haney, whoever wins that fight, right? Or Shakur Stevenson in the future, Lomachenko. If you want those big fights, then I think he's doing a good job. And I won't be surprised if he signs with Eddie Hearns matchroom boxing. You know, that's where a lot of the fighters are in the lightweight division, middleweight division. Um, and yeah, I want to see him fight the best, bro. Because look, the best fighter that he's fought in the last couple of fights was Leo Santa Cruz. And he's in the back end of his career. You know, credit to him. He dominated that fight with that vicious uppercut. It was a very exciting fight while it lasted. Mario Barrios kind of was rate drained a little bit, even though it was still impressive because Keith Thurman couldn't even get Mario Barrios out of here, and he's supposed to be a welterweight. So I want to see him in the best fights possible so it can actually help him in the sense that he can still be that draw. But I think it's more for your legacy when you fight the big fights. And so if it means him leaving Mayweather Promotions and going elsewhere and flocking elsewhere, then I think he's making the right choice. I do want to ask you a question, though, Ant, before you give your reaction, because I do think Mayweather kind of get a lot of flack, right? And I give him flack, too, so I'm not even going to say people are giving him flack, and I could be honest about that. But do you think that Mayweather sometimes gets a lot of unfair flack? Because when you look at Mayweather, for example, Deontay Wilder, when he lost to Tyson Fury the second fight, you know, I think Mayweather extended his, you know, um, invitation to train Deontay Wilder for the trilogy. And Deontay Wilder turned it down. He didn't feel that Mayweather had his best interest at heart. And you can see Tank Davis and Mayweather going back and forth. And a lot of people is wanting to believe that Tank Davis may be feeling the same thing about Mayweather. Like Mayweather thinks it's all about him and he's trying to get on his shine. Do you think that Mayweather is giving an unfair flag, or do you think really Mayweather is being an opportunist? How do you think, uh, how do you view Mayweather and his um, priorities? Well, I mean, I, I would say, yeah, um, he gets a lot of unfair flack. Um, you know, f and, and no disrespect, because I, I, I love Deontay Wilder. Like, this, this is somebody that, that, I, that I know personally. We've had him on the show. We, we sat in his gym for a couple of hours, you know, being able to, 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 to chop it up with him and whatnot. Um, but when you're talking about Floyd Mayweather, there there hasn't been a better career in the sport of boxing than, than Floyd Mayweather. Whether or not you feel like he's the greatest of all time, pound for pound or not, what you can't argue is that there has not been a better career in the sport of boxing than that of Floyd Mayweather. And, and when I say that, I'm talking about, one, obviously the record, two... You know, wherever you wherever you got him ranked, like you, you and real, realistically, you can't even rank Floyd Mayweather out of the top five all time if you're not being biased, right? Number two, and then number three is the financial aspects of it. No one has made more money from the sport. No individual fighter has made more money from the sport of boxing than Floyd Mayweather, right? So, so you know, career wise, yeah. So if 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 you if you want to to have a career like like that where you come out of it with one all of your senses at the end of the day because let's be clear all right you know the the point of boxing is to hit and not get hit right because 
you don't want to be out here punch drunk at the end of your career. You like I'm around a lot of boxers, a lot. You know, shout out to 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 Ring Ten, um, the charity organization that, that that we're affiliated with. But because of them, we're around a lot of boxers, and it's sad to say that a lot of these boxers that I've come in contact with over the past ten years, that that are, are have been in retirement for some time, they are not doing good. Whether they are okay financially or not is one thing, but physically, a lot of these fighters are not well after their careers in boxing. So if you're talking about, yeah, you want to you want to follow a blueprint. Uh, of, of how to, to, to do it in the sport of boxing, Mayweather is probably the best guy to go to because, one, he just got all of his senses right now. Now, whether or not, you know, the whole reading situation thing, that's that's one thing. But as far as just, you know, his senses and, 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 and you know, he doesn't he, – he, he can talk fine, everything is good, and his bank account is good. And he's still generating more money off the sport of boxing than – Anybody currently right now who's boxing right now, he's still generating more. He just had a had a fight in Dubai, an exhibition match. So he, you know, he fought Logan Paul a couple of couple of years last year. He fought Logan Paul. He's still getting more money than most boxers are. So he is the guy that you would want to model your career after. Now I know you say oh, he might have waited to take certain guys, and I and you know, listen, and I know you, I know you're a Pacquiao guy, but at the end of the day. Mayweather's older than Pacquiao, so if he waited on Pacquiao, he's still gonna be older than him when they fought. And guess what? He still he still got the W. As much as you know, you Pacquiao guys, you know, y'all like to, to, to. I mean, I'm not really. I won't call myself the biggest Pacquiao fan. I never believe it or not. When Mayweather and Pacquiao fought, I was a Mayweather fan. Like I voted for Mayweather win that fight. I was over Mayweather. But what got me frustrated is because I don't care about Mayweather's priorities. At the end of the day, Mayweather has his own priorities. I have my own as a consumer. Right. And I think a lot of it, a lot of the underestimated thing about sports is a consumer. Without a consumer, they won't be a product. So I kind of, you know, am a helper to Mayweather's career, just like everybody else, because without the jaw, you want to be you. You know what I'm saying? So I want to see the biggest fights possible from a consumer. I get the trying to make sure you have an industrious career and a life after boxing. And I get all that. But from a consumer, I just want to see the best fights. And if that means Tank Davis leaving, then that means Tank Davis is leaving, and I'm fine with that. But are there are, are the best fights? Are you because so, now you, that that means you're saying you're blaming the Mayweather not having what you feel like is the best fights on Mayweather when we know that's not how it works. First of all, the first the most part of his career, he was he was under um uh what was it uh, what's the guy freaking um um top rank uh, Bob Arum yeah he was under he was under Bob Arum. I can tell you from experience again because I've been around a lot of boxers. I can tell you, I one you know, shout out to to I ran the Blade Barkley, uh, five time five time champion, right? This is I've I've known him for for ten plus years. He said he we had a conversation one day. He said that he was supposed to get the fight with Sugar Shane Mosley. Bob Arum promised him the fight, kept over time, kept promising, 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 him, never never happened. You know, these promote it, 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 it be the promoters. Like we can't just say because oh we think because it's Mayweather this Mayweather that. No, you got to take into account these promoters dictate the fights because a lot of times they want to put their guys in place, right? So right. you got to you got to really take a look at these. Look at we got some of the, the most cricket promoters. But like Bob Orham is the same thing like with Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford, that's why he's a free agent right now. I think when you got a guy like Al Heyman and PBC or Eddie Hearns. The zone, they seem to get the fights, like because most guys are at that side of the street, so it's easier to make those fights. So I won't be opposed to Tank Davis going to Eddie Hearn's match room and facing a, a Haney. That'd be an easier fight to make compared to him still being under Mayweather promotions, right? Well, that's the thing you got to think, right? Because a lot of so the split before was there are some guys that are HBO boxers and there are sometimes some guys that are Showtime boxers. So now, if you're an HBO boxer, yeah, it's easy for me to line up. An HBO boxing fight with two guys that that fight for HBO, but it becomes a more difficult challenge when one of the guys is fighting under Showtime and got a contract with Showtime, and the other guy's got a contract with HBO because then it comes down to a money decision. Well, who's gonna make this money? Because who's gonna get this fight? I, you know, obviously HBO is not really in the game anymore like that, but that was for the the bulk of Mayweather's career. It was HBO versus Showtime. I just seen Tyson Fury. I'm gonna say I'm gonna let you get in here. I just seen Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder make three fights. I want to see the fights. That's all I want to see as a consumer. You know, and they were on different sides of the streets. They made it happen. They wanted it to happen. You wanted you wanted Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua, and we didn't get that. 
So that's because Anthony uh, Joshua was ducking. I think it was more Joshua, his no chin having himself, wasn't ready for the smoke from Deontay Wilder. <laughs> and Deontay's my guy. I love Deontay Wilder. Like, he's still my favorite heavyweight right now. Like, I'm, and Absolutely. I'm going to come back and get a belt again. You know, so. I think, you know, uh, Javante Davis is not making a mistake by not signing back with Floyd Mayweather. Because when we talk about like like um Ant just said when he just discussed how Mayweather essentially um is like one of the better uh, businessmen boxing has ever seen and he knows how to generate revenue knows how to get himself in the right positions and making the most potential potential money um Javante Davis is is essentially following in Floyd's footsteps and leaving the promoter that was get generating the money to do his own thing but instead you know Javante Davis is not gonna be able to fight Mayweather you know Mayweather fought De La Hoya who at the time, I believe, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think my history's a little off. Um, Mayweather was somehow tied to De La Hoya back before they fought. Was it, was it like I forgot exactly the, I, I don't know if he was signed under his promotion. At one point or another. At one point or another, he was, like, Mayweather was signed to De La Hoya's promotion or the promotion that De La Hoya was I under. I believe so. I believe so. At, at one particular time. So that fight was increased to the magnitude because it went from Pretty Boy Floyd to Money Mayweather when he, they, they, after that, that, in, that instant, that incited. And that, that whole little rant, like, I'm gonna make you call me pretty or that other stuff, which is hilarious. That, to this day, it's still one of the funniest videos you ever see if you've never seen it. Um, I say all that to say it. I think Javante Davis is following in the footsteps of Floyd with leaving the promoter and then possibly becoming his own business, becoming his own mar- mar- brand and stuff. I know Davis, Tank Davis is a huge, is a huge, huge brand name. It was under the Mayweather promotions. You know, he fought everybody that Mayweather was thrown at him. You know, rather, no matter the height, the size, the different weight classes, he tanked it at all. You know, even in my opinion, his biggest fight in his career was against Leo Santa Cruz, which was arguably one of the biggest names on his resume and it decimated. You know, it was one of the more gruesome knockouts I've seen in a while. And um, I think right now, if, Dev- if Javante Davis goes, goes out and says, all right, I want to go on my own. I want to fight the best of the best. I'm expecting Loma first fight. I, I have to see Loma the first fight into whatever fight he's expecting, preparing himself for after the uh, Mayweather promotion. I think that's something that is going to really excite fans. Like I understand we want to see Haney or Combosos. Com- Com- I, I keep. Oh, even Garcia, right? Ryan Garcia. Oh, Ryan Garcia. You know, I love to see those names, but you know, Loma and him have a little bit of back and forth from years ago. Like, Loma called him out years ago when Loma was, was hot. He was, he was one of the biggest fighters. And he was like, yeah, I want to fight Tank because, you know, stop hiding your fighters and they were the X, Y, and Z. So if Davis is talking about, oh, if Davis is thinking of fighting the best, the biggest and best names, you could go with Loma. Like, you don't have to go straight to Haney if they're ducking or whatever. You don't have to go straight to Cambosas or Tiafema Lopez or um, Brian Garcia. If they're all ducking. You should call Stevens. Shakur Stevens. Yeah, that, that's that the one. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Hey, there, that's back. the one. You I love that fight. I, I just don't know. Even with Shark Shakur Stevenson going up and, you know, coming up, I don't know if he's going to be like, all right, let me fight Davis right away. Because he might even be ducking. He might be like, all right, listen, I know I'm nice, but I don't want to go straight to Davis right well, in the midst of it. He spoke about it not too long ago. He was talking about yeah. the, um, in a recent interview. I heard, I heard about it. So, I would love to see that one over there. I'd time. love to see. If, that, if, they, if they can make that happen, that would be beautiful. But you know how boxing is. Boxing is going to have a, a million different reasons why they can't do it. All these eliminators. You have pro- uh, priorities, primaries, secondaries. Uh, all these other crap they be, they be throwing around. But Davis, like I said, I think right now, if Davis is the le- is leaving, planning to leave Mayweather Promotions, and he wants to start his own things up before signing to any other promoter, go with looking at Loma. You have to look at Loma first. That's to be, that should be the floor. Loma first. And then after that, because she, she, so I feel like right now, in my opinion, Shakur Stevens' the name is starting to rise a little bit above certain guys that we look I, at. I disagree a little bit. I disagree mm-hmm. a little bit, Jay. Now, I want to go Loma first because Loma it, okay. the reason is because Haney and Cambusos is about to duke it out for all the belts. If you have an opportunity to fight the winner of that fight and win those belts and control and dictate everything that happens in the lightweight mm-hmm. division and you're the ace card, then go right ahead. You know, I think you should do that. Only thing I would say is that I do think Tank Davis has a golden opportunity, believe it or not, to be even bigger than Floyd Mayweather. Because, listen, let's face it. Tank Davis has the equalizer, which is the power. I know skills pay the bills, but knockouts pay the pay-per-views. So if he can be able to dictate everything on going on in the lightweight division with that kind of power... There's no, especially social media now. You got TikTok and all of that. He can be the biggest star, bigger than Mayweather, honestly. 
I know. I told you remember before. I told you, I, I, Shakur <laughs> Stevenson. In my, in my opinion, Shakur is up. There. I, I I love Shakur Stevenson. I watch. I love watching him fight. For me, Shakur Stevenson, he continues his path. He's gonna be the like one of the top pound for pound fighters in boxing because of what he's able to do in the ring. His his the way he just reads the ring, the way he's able to move around, dictate his punches, really break down his opponent is beautiful to see. It's really beautiful boxing. It's boxing at its finest, and um, that's the art of boxing right there in its own, in its entirety. But when we talk about Javante Davis. I just feel like because I feel like Haney, if they, whoever wins those belts, all those belts, they're going to have some kind of ego and attitude that's going to prolong getting that fight to happen. But I know if Davis says, all right, I want to fight Loma, that fight will happen instantly. That fight will be something we'll see probably at the, at the beginning of the next year or like right in the middle of the next year. And that'll be one of the biggest fights because Loma sells pay-per-views. Davis sells pay-per-views. That's going to be a match made in heaven. When you look at Haney and Cambosa, they don't, those guys don't sell pay-per-views. That's actually one of the biggest knocks of their career. They don't sell pay-per-views. You know, so they're kind of banking on Davis calling them out or they, they want to fight Davis because they know that this guy sells all the pay-per-views. He's, he's going to put on a fight and they, he's going to sell it. So they're kind of just hoping hope. Davis goes out for them. I just hope Haney doesn't win because I'm torn because, you know, I want to support my own. But at the same time, to me, and I don't care what nobody else thinks, I'm just talking about my perspective. He's a born fighter to me. Like, I get it. Skills pay the bills. But like I said, knockouts by the pay-per-views. I don't see him as a pay-per-view star. You know what I'm saying? If he wins the belts, then, you know, like, I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Tank going in there and trying to get those belts and, and be the ace card. Well, the good thing about it, you know, about the fight is, you know, once you have an undisputed champion, that knocks out a lot of the ducking that can potentially go on in boxing. Because what we see is, well, all right, this guy has the WBO belt. This guy has the WBA. This guy has the IBF. This guy has, ha, ha, you know what I mean? So, and then in those belts, there's ranking orders within each, each, uh, each uh, organization. Yeah. So if you're the WBO champ, yeah, it might be nice to fight this guy over here, but you can also come up with the, well, you know, in the WBO rankings, this guy is first in line, so I don't have to take this guy because I have a, I can just go with this guy over here who's in that. But once you take away the multiple belt owners, that takes away from you being able to say, well, you know, this dude is not here because you know, I got to fight this guy first. You got all the belts. So now it's just, all right, are you going to fight the best opponent? And then we could look at it and say, all right, now, if you don't, now, all right, now this dude is ducking for real, for real. You know what I mean? Because you got all the belts. You got to fight at some point. Mm -hmm. Well, we do got to fight on Saturday. We might as well get right into those predictions right now. We are talking Javante Tank Davis versus Roley Romero. Power at his finest. Listen, I think, underratedly, this is going to be an exciting fight while it lasts. Okay, both guys got power. Okay, you got Roley Romero who's a very awkward fighter. And um, awkwardness always presents a stylistic, you know, hardship in a fight, especially early on. And he's strong. Look, the guy looks like a welterweight to me. I think they, they did a good job of selling the fight, honestly. I'm hoping that it will be shadowing, excuse me, Cambusos and Lopez, where a lot of people really didn't know who Cambusos was. Let's face it. If you're not watching overseas boxing right this guy fought in all over outside of america you didn't really know who cam Busos was and you allowed the chirping to kind of draw you into the fight and it actually turned out to be a very great fight which is something that i'm hoping for here and i think why it lasts for the six rounds that is going to last that we're going to see some interesting stuff but ultimately I got Tank Davis winning the fight via knockout. You know, I think even though he got touched a lot in his last fight against Isak Cruz, Isak Cruz got into him. Listen, that was a closer fight than a lot of people thought it was, literally. Um, I still think Javante Tank Davis will break um, Wally Romero down and eventually get that knockout and um, basically be on his way after he leaves Mayweather Promotions, barring that he does. Uh, you know... I'm a Tank fan. I, I think it's going to be in two rounds. Uh, I think Davis, I think Roley opened up a little anger in Javante Davis doesn't make him want to get him, get him out of here early. Uh, and I say all of that to say, you know, Issa Cruz, he showed us a lot in that Javante Davis fight. You know, I think people think, uh, people believe that he showed some weakness to Javante Davis on how to fight him. I just think Issa Cruz was like a different, uh, he had different determination that night. And uh, you saw even after that fight, 
his next fight right after was he just looked dominant. You know, Issa Cruz is on a, is on a rise essentially over that yeah. Davis fight, and shout out to Davis, you know, doing doing the good work, the holy work, the charity work. So, you know, getting these fighters the names up there and getting them into bigger paydays. Yeah, Issa Cruz was for Garcia for crying out loud. So hey, <laughs> shout out to Davis for that. But honestly, I think Javante gonna knock out Roley. Um, you know, I think Roley he's shown us some, uh, like you said, some unorthodox fighting in his, in his previous fights. I just think Davis is a different beast. And uh, I think when Davis is locked in and focused going into these fights, he's he's just a, a man amongst boys. And that's kind of how I view it. And uh, I think I can see this I can see this fight realistically ending in round four. You know, I said two to be funny, but round four, I believe this fight will be ended by the TKO. Uh, listen, I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm preaching to the choir. I'm going to agree with both of y'all on this one. <laughs> I'm, I'm going with Tank Davis again. Um, I love that they're gonna be back at the uh, at, at the Barclay Center uh, for this fight. I'm definitely gonna be gonna be tuned in. I should have went, but you know this is, but just you know, but I'm 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 gonna love to see this fight. I like I like Tank man. I think he's gonna do well. I do want to see him fight a lot of those other guys. Um, the Shakur Stevens fight, and I, and yeah. it's crazy because they they're actually you know pretty good friends. But I really would love to see that fight go down. Um. But yeah, I got I got I got Tank Davis. And let me let me just say this too. Um in regard if, if we could actually get that Shakur Stevens versus uh Tank Davis fight. I, I had um I don't know do you guys know Bruce Carrington? Uh Shushu. He uh he, I heard the name before. So he fought at Madison Square Garden uh twice this year. He, he's both of his last two fights were candidates for knockout of the year. Um but it, so we had him on the show and he's actually sparred with both uh Shakur Stevens and uh, Tank Davis. So you know, one of the things he was saying in regards to those two fighters is the the greatness about Tank is is the power. The greatness about Shakur Stevens is the speed and the defense. So when you combine those two things, I think that's going to make for a hell of a fight if we could actually get that fight. Absolutely, that would be my number one fight. Not number one fight of all boxing, but the lightweight division. That'd be my number one fight for sure. Um, we'll probably do something like that. We get about top five fights that we want to see um, going down the line. But ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Those are our predictions. Zay, I'm still waiting for my tickets, bro. Where the tickets at, bro, for this fight, man? Hey, man, I, I got no... Listen, I, I, can't, I don't got my hands. No connect. Dave, Dave, Davis, Davis is like, yo, we ain't, we ain't giving no free tickets out this time. <laughs> yeah. people, they challenged the South Beach. They with, they with the Miami Heat now, so I ain't even got no pull no more at the Barclays Center. <laughs> Now, I feel you, man. Hopefully, my legal stream will work, bro, because, you know, you got to watch the fight, you know, when you can get it, how you can get it. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that y'all with it. This wraps up another episode of In the Huddle. It was a fun time to be here on the show, and I want to thank you for hanging out with us today and being inside the huddle and looking forward to having you back on more consistently, bro. Let me know, man. I'm ready. Definitely. Y'all be good. Enjoy y'all weekend. Enjoy the games. Enjoy the boxing fight, and we'll be back top of the week. Peace. The Can You Dig It Sports Radio Network is here. Revolutionize the game of media. Be a dig, dig. In the huddle, and it's time to bring back one of our favorite games here on the show, as it's been a minute since we played this game. And for those of y'all that don't know this game, it's called Factor Cap. Basically, we'll read a couple statements, and if we agree with the statement, We'll just say fact and give a brief two to three sentences on why the statement is fact. Or if we disagree, we'll say it's cap and put on our caps if we disagree.